Welcome back, amigos, to another exciting After Effects tutorial. And this one is taking your drone footage to the next level. This technique works amazing for real estate, for aerial mapping and surveying. Special mention to Aerial Views. They provided this footage for me. And remember that life is truly a gift. Make it count. This is a drone footage that we will be using for this tutorial and we'll be creating boundaries for these two properties and measurements. Select your footage, drag it to the composition icon to make a composition with the same resolution, duration and frame rate as your footage. Hit control K or command K if you're on an Apple computer to open up the composition settings and everything should be set perfectly. The only thing is for this one, Let's reset the time code to 000. You may not have this issue with your footage, but for this one, or if you do, just simply set it to 000. It's a personal preference. And let's hit OK. The current time indicator, make sure that it's at the very beginning as 000. And let's right click time and let's go to freeze frame. We're going to freeze this footage at the very first frame because all the animation, all the work is going to be done on the first frame. Then we'll track and apply all that tracking data back into our footage. There are several ways to do the boundaries. One, you can use a solid layer with the pen tool, creating a mask. You can also create shape layers. And my personal preference is using shape layers because it gives you more flexibility and more options. So let's go ahead and use shape layers. Now let's deselect this layer, click outside. Let's go to the pen tool. And since we have everything deselected, it's going to create a shape layer. So let's zoom in. And what I'm going to do is simply just click, click at the corners. And this is the first one. And what we can do is we can change the fill, solid color. Let's change this color and the stroke. Make sure that you have no stroke or if you want, we can add a stroke. It's up to you. But for now, I'm going to disable the stroke. OK, you can see that it created a shape layer, shape layer one. And we can call this teal or we can call it blue. And let's create another one. So what I'm going to do is instead of adding to this same shape layer, I want to create a second shape layer. So let's deselect. Let's go back. And let's create the second boundary. And this corner, we can move it. We can change the color. And if you need to tweak, we can call this pink. If you need to tweak any of these points, you can drill down to contents, shape, go to path. Go to the selection tool and you can tweak any of these points. And I think it looks pretty good. OK, let's go back. And let's just scale these up. Simple animation. And make sure that we're at the beginning. Hit S for scale. Click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Let's go forward to frame 12. Let's add another keyframe and let's go back and let's make this zero. Very simple. Let's add easy ease. Select the last keyframe, Shift F9 for easy ease. And what we can do is select the keyframes. Let's jump into the graph editor. Right click, make sure that you're in the speed graph. And let's highlight this keyframe. And what we can do is just simply move the influence, this handle, so we can change the influence. So it'll start very fast, then slow down. So let's check it out. That looks better, much better. OK, the next step is let's add the measurements, the lines and the numbers. Go to the text tool. And the first one is, let's type in 80. And I'm using Helvetica. And let's take out the italics. And let's make this 72. And I'm going to leave this up to you to change, to use whatever font, whatever settings you want. We can make it minus 25. 
but that is totally up to you. A very easy to read font is the best. Go ahead and grab the rotation tool and we can rotate this. Let's go to the selection tool and let's move this right here. Right about here. Perfect. And what we want to do is draw the lines. Again, we'll be using shape layers. Let's deselect everything in the timeline and let's go back to the pen tool. And since we have everything deselected, After Effects will be creating a shape layer line. Starting from the number, let's go ahead and click here and then let's click to the end. Now, we want to draw a second line. And the key to doing this is hit control and click to reset. And now we can draw our second line. Perfect. You can see that After Effects created this new shape layer. Let's rename it and call it 80 line. Let's color code these two. Let's make it yellow. And this 80 line, let's go ahead for the fill, select none for the fill, and let's give it a stroke. And for this one, 10 pixels is okay. The current time indicator, let's move it all the way to the beginning. And what we'll do is let's drill down to the contents. And you can see that we have two shapes. The two shapes are the two lines. Make sure that we're highlighting contents and let's add a trim path. Let's drill down to the trim path. And what we're going to do is animate these lines. So for the end, let's make it zero. Let's add a keyframe, click on the stopwatch. And let's go forward to frame 10. And let's make this 100 and add easy ease. So let's check it out. Perfect. And what we can do is also scale up the number and make sure that we're at the beginning. Hit S for scale. Click on the stopwatch. Let's go forward to frame eight. Let's add a keyframe and let's go back and make this zero. And we can add easy ease. And this is what we have. Okay, let's repeat this process for the next lines, this one and this one. So let's go ahead and what we can do is go ahead and select the 80, control D or command D if you're on an Apple computer. Let's call this 90. Let's move this down here and let's change it to 90. And let's go ahead and create the lines. Actually, let's move it a little bit down. I think this is good. Let's create a line. So let's deselect all the layers in the timeline. Go back to the pen tool. And starting from the number, click and let's go all the way up here. Let's reset. And to reset is control click so we can draw the second line. Perfect. And what we want to do is copy the animation for the trim path for the 80. So what we can do is go back to the 80 line, go to the trim path. Just make sure that you're at the very beginning at 000, and we can copy this. So control C or command C. You can also go to edit copy. And let's go to this shape layer. Let's rename it to 90 line. And then these two, we can change the color. And again, make sure we're at the beginning. Go to the 90 line. Go to contents and you can go to edit paste or control V or command V. And you can see that it pastes the trim path. And let's check it out. Perfect. Let's do one more and let's do it for here. And obviously you don't know if it's in feet, if it's in inches, obviously it's not in inches. Uh, it could be in meters or it can be in feet. You can also add, you know, 80 feet or 80 meters, or you can do something here. that says all numbers are in feet or in meters. So that I leave it up to you. Let's go ahead and draw this last line. What I'm going to do is go to the 80 command D or control D to make a copy. Let's move it up. Let's call it 120. I'm going to move this over here. Let's change it to 120. 
And then this one, because of the perspective, let's italicize it. And let's see if we can place it right where it should be. This looks pretty good. Let's change the color. And we're going to draw the line. So make sure that you have all your layers deselected. Go to the pen tool. Starting from the number, click and let's go to the end and let's reset it. Control click to reset the line so we can draw a second line. Perfect. And let's just copy that trim path. So this is the 120 line. Let's go to the 90 line and let's go to the trim path. Make sure we're at the beginning and we can copy. Let's just copy this. Let's paste this. Go to contents and control V, command V. And there you have it. You have the trim path. Okay, now everything is animating at the same time. So what we can do is we can just go ahead, select the measurements. Let's just move it. Let's drag these layers over. And we can also stagger these. For example, let's see. We can have the 80 first. The 90 could come afterwards. Let's change these two colors to orange. So it's up to you. You can play around. You can stagger some of these layers so it's all animating at a different time. Let's go back to our project window. Select your composition and make two copies. Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac or Apple. This one, let's call it boundary. And this one, let's call it measurement. And let's double click on the boundary. And this one will only contain the squares, the boundary of the property. So go ahead, select all the numbers and we can hit delete. And let's delete our footage as well. And let's play back. So this is what we have. And if we toggle the transparency grid, you can see that it's on a transparent background. Let's go to measurement. And the measurement will only contain the measurements, the numbers, and the lines. So let's go ahead and delete the squares, the boundary properties, and the footage. Delete. And if we toggle the transparency grid, you can see that it's on a transparent background. Let's play back. And this one only contains the measurement. Let's go to the tutorial footage and let's make a copy of this. And let's just call this backup just in case we need to go back. Go to the tutorial footage and delete all the layers except for your footage. And let's drill down to the time remap. And remember that we froze this on the very first frame. So let's unfreeze this footage. Go ahead and click on the stopwatch to delete this freeze frame. And now when we play it back, we're ready to track this footage in Mocha. There are three different ways that you can track this footage. Number one is you can use a 3D camera tracker. Let's go to the tracker window. And that is window tracker, select your footage and we can select track camera and After Effects will analyze this footage and pretty much you set up a 3D virtual camera. Now, this is a little hit or miss for me sometimes, so we're not going to use this method. Another one is track motion and you can select perspective corner pin and this is not a bad option. This is a decent option to use. Now, the last option is using Mocha AE, right here, track in Mocha AE. And in my experience, for this type of tracking will give you the best results. So let's go ahead and use Mocha. Go back to your composition. Make sure that your footage is selected. Go to animation and select track in Mocha AE. Mocha will automatically populate all of these fields. Let's hit OK. And I previously worked on this file already, so let's overwrite. That's OK. And this is a classic interface in the older versions of Mocha. In the newer versions, in CC 2019 and CC 2020, it has a different interface, although you can switch back to this classic view. Also, the newer version has a different way to export the tracking data. 
Regardless, if you're using the new version or the old version of Mocha, I'll show you both methods. Now, Mocha is a planar tracking software. That means that it works the best when it's tracking planes in your footage. For example, the street is a plane, the top of this building is another plane, the top of this house is a plane, and what we can do is we can cheat and we can use this whole area as a plane. Although it's not perfect, Mocha will still do a pretty good job. Now, before you track, it's important to skim through your footage and figure out the best frame to start tracking because sometimes it's best to start at the very end and work backwards or maybe in the middle. But in this case, in this footage, it's okay. We can start tracking at the very beginning. So let's move all the way to 000. I'll simply zoom out, move this over, and let's grab the X spline tool and loosely draw a shape around the area that you want to track. Just click and right click to close this shape. We can move the points and you can see that it's rounded. We can just make it straight. And let's head down to track and let's track everything. Translation, scale, rotation, shear and perspective. And let's go ahead and let's analyze forward. Mocha will analyze and track your footage. It'll take a while, so I'll fast forward this section. Once Mocha finished the tracking, let's move all the way back to the beginning. Let's move the current time indicator to zero, 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 the first frame. And what we want to do is activate the surface tool. And this is the surface tool and the surface tool allows us to do our replacement. This is really great when you're doing a screen replacement, for example, for a phone or for a TV, you simply put this surface tool around the area of your screen and Mocha will use that area and replace it with whatever you want. In this case, we're going to use the surface tool in a different manner. What we're going to do is simply click on this button and we'll make the surface tool the area of our entire composition. So the trick is just go to the first frame and click on this button. We're ready to export the tracking data. Go to export tracking data and let's select this option, After Effects corner pin, copy to clipboard. Let's go back to After Effects and let's go back to our project window. Let's bring in the boundary and let's bring in measurement and the current time indicator, very important. Let's go all the way to the very beginning of our timeline and select the boundary and let's paste that tracking data. And you can see that After Effects added a corner pin along with keyframes for the position, scale and the rotation. Let's do the same thing for the measurement. And again, it added a corner pin along with keyframes for the position, the scale, and the rotation. And let's check it out. Feel free to either add a blending mode or we can drop down the opacity for the boundary. We'll drop it down to 65 in this example. Select your footage and head over to Animation, Track, and Boris FX Mocha and click on the button to launch Mocha. Now this is the new look, the essential interface. If you want to switch to the classic view, simply go to the drop down and you can switch to classic, but we'll stick with essential. Let me zoom out. Z is to zoom out head over to the X spline tool. Like I mentioned before, skim through your footage and figure out which is the best frame to start tracking. For this one, we'll start tracking at the very beginning at zero. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and draw a shape. I'm gonna draw a shape around the area that I want to track. And we can adjust any of these points. And over here, select perspective. We want to track all of these and let's track and analyze forward. Once Mocha finishes tracking, let's 
go ahead, move the current time indicator all the way to the beginning and click on the surface tool. And let's make the surface tool the size of our composition. We can go ahead and go here and click on this button or this one, and it'll make it the size of our composition. That's it. Go to File, Save, and let's close Mocha. Let's go back to our project window, bring in the boundary, and bring in the measurement. Go back to our footage. Let's go to Effect. Let's drill down to Tracking Data. And let's go to Create Track Data. And we had it on Layer 1. So select Layer 1. And Export Option, select Corner Pin. Or you can put Corner Pin with Motion Blur. It's up to you. And Layer Export. Let's go to... We'll do one for measurement and the second one for the boundary. So let's go first to boundary and hit apply. And if we go to the boundary composition, After Effects added the corner pin data. So you can see that the boundary is being tracked. Let's go back. And this one, let's go to measurement and apply export. Click on that button. And let's go to measurement. You can see that After Effects added this corner pin. And that is how you can use the new version of Mocha AE to do the tracking with CC 2019, CC 2020, and above. Let's create a cutout for this house. Let's move the current time indicator all the way to the beginning. Create a solid layer. Make comp size, the colors doesn't matter. Hit OK, and let's rename it to Mask. Let's drop down the opacity to 50% for now. Go to the Pen tool and simply let's trace this house. Bring back the opacity to 100%, and let's move this layer right above the boundary. Let's select the boundary and the solid layer. Let's color code it to blue. And we'll be using track mat. If you don't see track mat, simply click on this middle icon. So you can see track mat, select boundary, and select alpha inverted. Now what we need to do is paste all that tracking data from Mocha. So let's go all the way to the beginning. Select the mask, edit, paste. And let's check it out. Now you can see that it's not perfect. It's slipping right here at the bottom and at the top, but we can fix it. Let's go back to the beginning, go to the mask, hit M to bring the mask properties, and let's add a keyframe. Click on the stopwatch, and let's go all the way to the very end. Let's change this color so it's easier to look. And what we're going to do is simply move the mask. And it's a little tricky because what we need to do is simply move the mask, but it's changing it here. Remember that we're adding a corner pin, rotation, scale, and position keyframes, and we need to move it so it lines up perfectly. And if you need to add any more keyframes in between, feel free to add those keyframes. But this should do a decent job. And let's check it out. 